I'm Nicole Chettle on the Great Barrier Reef where for the first time scientists are transplanting coral larvae onto damaged patches of the reef using underwater curtains in an effort to save this natural wonder. Now to tonight's special now report. Now to tonight's special now report. Now to tonight's special report. Well, now to tonight's special report and new hope for the Great Barrier Reef. For the first time, scientists are successfully transplanting coral larvae in areas that have been damaged by cyclones and bleaching. It could change the way reefs are managed around the world. More than half of the world's reef systems are severely degraded or are likely to become so in the next couple of decades. And it's even worse in Southeast Asia, where 95% are highly degraded and are facing a serious threat to their existence. But trials in the Philippines have shown with a little help, tiny coral babies can thrive, becoming the size of dinner plates in just three years. Now the Australian technique is being deployed here in an effort to save one of our most important natural wonders. Nicole Chettle has more from Heron Island on the southern end of the Grey Barrier Reef. It's a spectacular setting for new life on a grand scale. Scientists are harnessing the power of nature, capturing coral eggs and sperm that float on the surface after the annual spawning. The result, microscopic larvae matured in tanks before returning to the ocean with a far greater chance of survival. What we have here now is the opportunity to put literally millions of larvae back into the reef system and watch them grow into juvenile corals and then hopefully into adult corals. So it's really exciting. Professor Peter Harrison was part of the team that discovered mass coral spawning here in the 80s, when few believed the Great Barrier Reef would ever need a helping hand. So in the past, the Marine Park Authority has had a philosophy of basically getting out of nature's way. But climate change is really changing that. The reef is battered and bruised. It's more impacted than it's ever been before. This is a time for us to do more and act now to save the Great Barrier Reef. For the first time, the Marine Park Authority is intervening in the natural process, using an Australian innovation trialled in the Philippines on reefs that were ruined by blast fishing. They found underwater tents help coral attach and grow to reproduce naturally within a few years. This is what the reef looked like before and after. Now it's Queensland's turn. These corals here are all from brain coral larvae, and then some of the larger uh, containers that we have here are branching corals. So tell me, do you feel like a proud dad looking at these millions of, of coral babies? I'm very happy because I realise that we've been able to raise literally millions of coral larvae here. Scientists have refined their methods, deploying 100 square metres of mesh curtains over patches of dead coral. It's a move welcomed by local businesses and the visitors that keep them afloat. I think the whole world's worried about yeah. it. I think everybody is concerned. Absolutely critical. If we don't have the reef, we don't have, we don't have a tourism business. So um, it's really important to maintain it into the future. The technology is proven to work on a small scale. The federal government is contributing $600,000, including funds to identify the best sites. This project isn't designed to repair the vast length of the Great Barrier Reef, but it does have huge potential for smaller feeder reefs that supply coral to other areas. And the science shows that if you nurture baby corals, it is possible for nature to begin to heal itself. The next challenge is building much larger nets, and that will cost between one and two million dollars a year over the next five to ten years. Well, we're very excited about this trial project and its potential. We would consider uh, further trials like it or further projects like it, depending on the success of this one. A small test site established last year is already showing promising coral growth, encouraging workers who've spent decades protecting these waters. It's everything really to me. I'd say I, I worked on it for nearly 30 years. I've made a career out of it and um, it's very important to me and, and to the future generations of Australia. I don't know of any reef system on the planet that is now healthier than it was 35 years ago. And that's really sad. But it drives me to make sure that while I'm alive, we can try by doing research that will actually have a meaningful impact. These tiny larvae will one day form part of a system that's visible from space. And scientists say this research could mark the rebirth of the reef. Nicole Chettle, ABC News, Heron Island.